I'm starting to make this hair head bust and I started with the drawing. From the drawing I made a template uh, that's going to be the size of the finished sculpture. If you're not confident about drawing you can simply scan in, photograph and print it out in black and white after enlarging it to the size you want it to be. Obviously if your printer only prints up to A4, A4 size is going to be the maximum height of your sculpture. I started by rolling a thick slab of clay and I've bent it round to support. You can pad it out with a bit of newspaper or bubble wrap to help hold its shape. I then um, cut a lump of clay to make the head. The head will sit on this post that will help support the weight. Uh, with my template, I put my template against the clay. Um, I measure I measure points, mark points rather, on the template for the base of the ears, the, the point of the eyebrow, uh, the start of the nostril, the end of the nostril, the neck, behind the ears. I can draw a sketch in any way, draw a wee line around that. But those lines will help me transfer the template from this side to the other side accurately. So after trimming it all off there, when you're trimming off, make sure your, your knife's very level, very square to the clay. So that you don't trim more on one side and less on the other. Okay, now that's closer in size. I'll put on again. Just line up those wee, the, the holes, the points. Then I just draw a straight line across from those holes, those points. Even more need to come off there. And from that straight across to there. And then we can turn it over, turn your image over and line those dots up. Again, then you can just mark any excess that needs trimmed off. There. A little there. Starting with a solid lump of clay for the head. Once I'm finished and I'm happy with the head and allow it to dry for a few days, I'll section it off and hollow it out. Um, so quite often I'll start with a wee bit of a slit in the base. Just so that I can, if I make a slit in the base, then I can open it out to make the cheeks fatter, to fill out the head. Just do that. Um, and by pushing my fingers inside the clay, and pushing out, that's going to give me a fullness to the cheeks. And I press down with my thumb to round off those edges. And just repeat on the other side. So I'm putting two fingers inside, pushing out, supporting with my thumb on the outside. Make that a bit wider. Yeah. When you've worked on one side, immediately turn the clay over and work on the other side to keep it as symmetrical as possible. Um, it's also a good idea to look at your sculpture from above. Just to, again, just to check the symmetry of it. So once you're happy enough with the thinner area around the, the bottom of the nose and a fatter area around the cheeks, both sides. Then I would just check your template again because quite often it's very easy for the clay to become very stretched and very distorted and no longer the shape and size that you want. I need to flatten that out a little bit there, take a wee bit off there. Oh. This means I don't need to add any extra clay on, just really push out from inside. I'm keeping, I'm keeping an eye that the dots keep lining up. You can see that has stretched a little. This is why I marked it, so I just press that back in again. And you can do I would, although you can see in the image that the hair has his head turned away and lifted, his chin lifted slightly. It's easiest to start off with the head on symmetrically. I have um, I've almost done like a, a raised rib area for the, the middle of the breastbone there. Um, it wouldn't be so pronounced the neck, but they're, just to give me a centre line really. So with the head, I'll mark on a centre line. Want that 
center line to work out. Right? So that'll help me measure out from that center line to make the feature symmetrical. I'm looking at my drawing for the distance that the neck is set back from the front of the nose. Um, I'll, I'll later use that to kind of line me up with the, the eyes. But I can see that if I follow this line up, um, it would be about that, that ridge of the far eye. So I can move this forward until that lines up with that a wee bit better. And then simply cross hatch and join that. So again, this the clay is very thick at this point. I'll hollow all this out when I'm happy with the shape and it's dry for a few days. So I'll just very quickly cross hatch this. When you're cross hatching, it's important that you go all the way through the thickness of the clay from the outside edge through to the inside edge. They don't go halfway across or part of the way across. Because this clay is quite wet, I'm not actually adding any slip at this point because the clay is so wet and soft. I need very little to join it. So when I join it again, I'm looking for this line to be lined up with that. And put a new patch on. Oh, sorry, camera sheet in front of me. So then I'll use a tool that I would call a spoon like tool. So it's a wooden tool that has a curved edge, and I just blend those two together. You can support the clay in the side. But you have to remember there's going to be a jaw here. This jaw will come around to meet the neck. So even now you can start getting those nice curved lines in. 